And joining me now is Pavlina Asta, that's Asta like pasta. She's a pop culture and millennial commentator and recipient of four Gracie Awards. You're also the holder of two Guinness Book of World Records. I mean, your show is even syndicated, is that yeah. right? Now it's been over 500 major celebrity interviews. I'm on 19 stations across the country. I want you to come work on my radio show. If we keep meeting like this, people might start to talk. Um, the reason you're here is because uh, you're a young person who has kind of done a do-it-yourself uh, media trajectory. This is uh, like multimedia all by yourself. I love your jacket. Thank you. I'm really into blazing. Where's Pavlina? Where are you from, Pavlina? I know you're supposed to interview me, but I want to know about you. <laughs> but you started doing this when you were how old? Pavlina's interviewed so many celebrities. How did it start, Pavlina? How did you jump into it? becoming a radio personality, a media personality. Well, I am from Daytona Beach, Florida, and I would play my steel drums like on the beach and everything just because like it was fun, why yeah, not? Yeah. And I was getting interviews by like local radio stations like, what is she doing on the beach? And I was just like, you know, not thing. I was getting interviews like by local radio stations and one of the radio managers was like, oh, you're in here like all the time. You should just have your own show. This is Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place, and I'm on location here at the Fox Studios in New York City. When I was sent, you know, info on you, I was blown away. I just, I want to be you, so oh, how can you. I be you? <laughs> Tell me about Benito. <laughs> I'm joined from New York by entertainment journalist Pavlina Osta. Welcome to the show. I am joined now by pop culture and millennial commentator Pavlina Asta. Joining me now from New York is Pavlina Asta. She's the podcast uh, producer and executive director at uh, Salon Media. She's also the host of The Pavlina Show. Pavlina, welcome to our program. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. Millennials, um, I think, are very impressionable. They don't really know uh, the difference um, between right. the two. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you're told something and you, you want to believe it. What, do you, what is your take on the criticism that the film is receiving? All of the critics reports have been absolutely fantastic. I haven't seen a whole lot of like actual merchandise for the movie just because you know it is so new and everything and I think this movie will really be setting waves in the fashion world as well especially like I said with luxury items. What makes string instruments so popular in China? I discuss this with Paulina Osta, an entertainment journalist in New York City. The pipa, the arhu, um, are some really traditional uh, Chinese instruments that are similar to the violin. Um, and you can even hear a lot of Chinese instruments in American folk music. A decades ago, when I was uh, coming out of college, it was something of a stigma. If you were at home, you were something of a loser. Is yeah. that apply now or is there a sort of an embrace of people? I think it's kind of like it's kind of like a shelter like it's okay kind of thing you'll get out into the world. What I've always thought was really interesting was I know a lot of millennials and like the generations behind them you know generation Z's um, but I don't know how involved they were you know how much they thought on a daily basis like oh these terrorist attacks are happening like, this is very real. Pavlina Asta we are going to be seeing and hearing a lot more from you. You've got 15 <laughs> radio stations now you want to conquer the radio world yes. and then take yes. over TV Take my job. <laughs> Fine, take it. No, I'm kidding. Yes. You're gonna do well. You're gonna do great.